Good morning, church. Happy Mother's Day. And seeing all you beautiful people at 9 a.m. this morning. You know, I wanted to ask you guys this morning, how, how's your Mother's Day been so far? Good, good. I, you know, yesterday I was thinking, I'm going to hear, I'm going to go in the, into the congregation and ask them how their Mother's Day was. And then the Lord said, Rach, the reality is, you know, we want the breakfast in bed and the sleep-ins. We want the mani pedis after church. We want the family walks. We want the no tantrums, right? But the Lord said to me, Rach, in reality, there are going to be some people that are pretty underwhelmed here this morning. And there are going to be some people here this morning that um, are pretty heartbroken over some stuff. And so I was like, okay, God, and uh, listened to him for a while. And he gave me some things to share. Would that be all right? We're a family here, right? You know what families do? Healthy families. They address the real deals, right? Okay, so let's just... Let's just be not religious this morning and let's address it because there's some people in the room that I feel the Lord wants to speak to this morning. Um, C.S. Lewis has this beautiful quote that says, God allows, always allows us to feel the frailty of human love so we'll appreciate the strength of his. And I feel there are some women in this room that they've, they've felt the frailty of human love. And so my prayer for you this morning is that you would feel a double portion of the Lord's strength and love for you this morning. You know, every year when Mother's Day rolls around, we as the leadership um, think and pray about what we want to do to honor the mums and the grandmothers in the room. And we're going to do that this morning. But you know what? Every year the Lord speaks to me about the women in the room that find not just today, but the weeks coming up to today really difficult. And the men in the room that find this day very difficult. Maybe there are some women in this room that have lost their mums, and um, today is just like pouring salt on that wound. Some women in this room might um, have had a mum in their life physically, but they weren't emotionally present. And so when Mother's Day rolls around, it's just like, oh no, now I have to remember my childhood and what I grew up with. Maybe there are some men in the room that have no longer got their mums with them. And today, they find it very hard. God spoke to me about the, the men in the room that have lost their wives. And I started to cry because I was thinking about the, the, the men and how they feel on today as they parent their kids. And even if they've remarried, how that would feel when they remember their first wife. There's a forgotten group in the room as well, the weeks and months that come up to Mother's Day with all the cards and the gifts around, and they are the childless mums. Whether it's through barrenness or infertility, I just want you to know that you are not alone and we are thinking of you this morning. One in 10 couples struggle with infertility. It's a real deal. And if you look around, I mean, we have three services. So we have a significant amount of people that come to this church and that a lot of women struggle with this. You know, it's easy to feel forgotten on a day like this when everyone's busy celebrating and your heart is busy breaking. And so we as the leadership at The Rock want to let you know that we love you, we're for you, and as we celebrate women this morning, we are thinking about you and celebrating you as a woman. Last year, I was asked to share a little bit about Eve and how she was the mother of all living beings before she even had a child. And that's because the very essence of who Eve was, was a mother, as a woman, with children or without children, we own the essence of what a mother is. The mother heart of God shines through us and exudes out of us. This year, the Lord started to talk to me through rivers, believe it or not. Oswald Chambers has a quote that says, A river is victoriously persistent, overcoming all barriers. For a while, it goes steadily on its course. But then it comes to an obstacle. And for a while, it's blocked, yet it soon makes a pathway around the obstacle. Or a river will drop out of sight for miles. 
only later to emerge again, even broader and greater than ever. The Lord said to me, Rachel, where there says river, say woman. So here it is. A woman is victoriously persistent, overcoming all barriers. For a while, she goes steadily on her course, but then comes to an obstacle. And for a while, she is blocked. Yet, she soon makes a pathway around the obstacle. Or a woman will drop out of sight for miles. Remember those seasons, women, when we have times when we feel hidden and we feel obscure, and we feel unseen and we feel unheard? Only later to emerge again, even broader and greater than ever. I love rivers because rivers find a way where there is no way. They create a path for others to follow. And women here at The Rock this morning, we want to say to you, we see you. And you will find a way where there is no way. And you will create a path for others to follow. Women are needed and necessary in the health of this church. So this morning, if you are a mother, a grandmother, or indeed a woman, would you stand? Because we want to honor you this morning for who you are in this church. <laughs>